Empanadas are hand pies made in various ways across the Spanish and Portuguese-speaking worlds. You'll see prettier ones than mine, but these tasted darn good, and I just improvised the fillings, mostly with stuff that I already had, which I think is the traditional way of doing nearly any pie or dumpling. Historically, it's a bag for leftovers. Use what you've got. I'm going to show you a chicken filling and a bean filling that's meatless. The crust is actually vegan, though it doesn't have to be. For a dozen empanadas, I've got three cups of flour, about 360 grams. And then, yes, I'm using butter-flavored shortening. Lard would be traditional, butter too, but this shortening tastes real good. It gets you a more tender crumb, and the pastry is easier to work with. It's less brittle, less melty than butter. I've got the equivalent of a stick of butter in there, 4 ounces, 115 grams. For salt, I'm doing 2 teaspoons of Morton Kosher, like 10 grams, which is a little undersalted for me. It's going to get some more salt later. I'll cut the fat into the flour with a pastry cutter, but you could do this on a cutting board with a knife or a couple of forks and obviously in a food processor. You could probably use up to twice as much fat as I'm using. That'd be real tasty, but the dough would be stickier and more delicate, way harder to work. Oh, and in lots of countries, they put in some baking powder to make the crust kind of thick and fluffy. You could do that. I want the thin, crispy vibe today. Once I've got that kind of breadcrumb consistency, I'll crack in an egg. That's traditional. Also traditional would be enough cold water to make it come together into a dough. But I'm using white wine because I think white wine is amazing in pastry crust. I started with like a third of a cup, 80 mils. The wine brings a subtle floral sweetness, and the alcohol might make the crusts a little more tender, but here's the thing. I made empanadas for years using my basic French pastry knowledge, which calls for kneading a pie crust hardly at all, almost no kneading, just to keep everything very tender and crumbly. Problem is, such a crust is very delicate, very hard to wrap around things, very likely to burst. So then I realized that all these empanada recipes written by people who are actually from Latin countries tell you to knead the dough for like five minutes. Traditionally, this is not a delicate pastry, and a kneaded dough makes empanadas as easy to assemble as my new sofa from the sponsor of this video, All Form. All Form is a sister brand of that mattress maker that also supports the channel, Helix, and like my mattress, this new couch is super comfortable. But the coolest thing about All Form stuff is that it's modular. You can buy pieces and assemble them into 500 plus different combinations of chairs and sofas with different seat numbers corners or no corners, chases, ottomans, all for way cheaper than a typical custom-build couch. For our new living room, I ordered a three-seater leather sofa with a chase, and I didn't have to get it delivered by movers. It came in boxes. Shipping is free. The parts are all American-made. You assemble them with these big wing nuts that are really easy to turn. I could order more seats or sections and add them on later if I want, or I could take a section away and repurpose it as a chair. They're great if you're going to be moving into a different place, or if you trying to make something fit in a really odd sized room. Really cool. And so far the family loves lounging around on this thing. There's a hundred day trial. All form will come and pick it up if you decide you don't like it. Full refund within a hundred days. Hit my link below or just go straight to allform.com slash Adam Ragusea and you can get 20% off the sofa of your choice. Thank you all form. 20% off a sofa easy to assemble as these empanadas which will be even easier to roll after you let the dough sit in the fridge for at least a half an hour. I'm going to do my fillings while I wait. Chicken first. Again, I'm really just improvising here. I've got a couple of big chicken legs left over from my thigh video. You could use a couple thighs. I'll just get those browning in a pot with a little oil. I don't care if the skin sticks and gets torn up. I'm going to shred this. I just want to create some brown flavor in the pot. I've got a bunch of green onions. I'll slice those up. I'll peel and chop a couple garlic cloves, and I've got a jalapeno. Yes, I'm shaving out the ribs to take out the spiciness. I have people coming over for dinner. Empanadas are really made for company and some of my guests don't like heat. Dice those up. Got some brown on my legs. I'll spread them and put in the peppers, the garlic, the white and whitish green parts from my onions. Stir those in and let them fry a little bit. I'll also put in some spices. I did some dry oregano, cumin, smoked paprika, and just a little cinnamon. Stir those spices and let them fry for a sec. That gives them a nice toasty flavor, but before they burn, in goes a small can of tomatoes. I like this brand, and I like the roasted variety for stuff like this. I think they basically just blacken the skins. Deglaze that pan with all of that, and then I'll put in a pinch of salt to start with, but I'm going to be conservative because I'm going to reduce this down a lot later. After I just let this sit and simmer on low heat for like an hour until the meat is soft. Stir it every now and then just to make sure nothing is sticking to the bottom and burning. Here we are after an hour, and you 
you can just push on the meats and you can tell that it's soft enough to shred. Pull those out to a cutting board and let them cool until you can handle them. Meanwhile, I'll reduce all this down, heat up, and I'll boil this and stir it constantly. That's a very thick, very sweet liquid. It could easily stick and burn, so stir. I think hand pies work best when the filling is very intensely flavored because you can't fit very much in there relative to the mass of the crust. Also, I think they work best when the filling is pretty dry. That way the pie doesn't leak when it's baking and it doesn't leak over you when you're eating it. We can achieve all these objectives if we just reduce this all the way down to a very intense thick sauce. We can always thin it out again if we overshoot the mark. Time to pull the chicken. I'm going to get rid of the skin. It's wet, slimy. Pull off the meat and you can feel with your fingers if there's any tendons or chunks of cartilage that feel hard or slimy. Anything you don't want to eat, you can just pull it out. And then you can pull the meat into shreds, but go easy because it's going to shred more as you stir it into the sauce. I'm also going to chop this up a little bit. I don't want super long strings of chicken coming out and falling on my chin as I eat my pie. In the sauce that goes along with my onion greens, I've got some leftover manchego cheese, one of our favorite cheeses to just have with bread and wine. I'm crumbling in like 50 or 60 grams, but you could use any cheese or skip it. Stir that in. The filling is looking really tight, really dry, which I think is good. Give it a taste, need some more salt, and maybe I'll loosen up the texture a little with some water, but not much. That's really good and done. Here's a meatless filling that's way quicker. I've got a shallot, a red chili, and half a pound of tomatillos. I'll just roughly chop up that shallot, and yeah, I think I want a couple of garlic cloves in there too. I'll shave the ribs out of that chili to remove some heat and dice. Peel the husks off the tomatillos, and then I'm just going to kind of hack at them indiscriminately. This will help them cook down faster into a sauce, and it will limit the size of the skin pieces floating around. You won't end up with any huge slimy bits of skin that are super noticeable. All that goes into some hot oil in a pan. The wider the pan, the quicker this will cook down. After like 10 minutes, I've got it softened and reduced down to almost like a jam or a chutney consistency. That's going to get me the tight, intense filling that I think works well. A can of beans, kidney beans or whatever beans, drained and rinsed in the pan. Zest a lime and then juice in half of it to start with. That might be enough. And then I'll get a handful of cilantro that I'll chop up. Really going for kind of a salsa verde vibe here. In that goes with a bunch of pepper. Hold off on the salt until we can stir and taste because the beans are already salty. Maybe some oregano and a little sugar to balance the acidity. Vegans could obviously leave it there, but I've got some leftover cotilla cheese, which is one of these salty, crumbly Mexican cheeses that doesn't really melt. So to bind this filling, I'll try to mash up some of the beans as I stir everything together. The beans will be the binder. Give it a taste, need some more salt, and there we are. For our next trick, we'll need some egg wash, one beaten egg loosened up with some water, and here's the dough. Some people roll it out into one big sheet and then use a cutter to stamp out individual rounds. I think I'd rather do the thing where you divide this into a dozen balls, roll them smooth, place one between a couple of sheets of parchment or wax paper, and then smash. If I had a tortilla press, I'd use that. You can't really get it thin enough with the pan. That's just a good way of getting it started. Then you finish the job with a rolling pin. I'm getting these to where they're like thick tortillas, and this way there's no excess trimming that you have to roll out again like you'd get if you punched out rounds with a mold. All done. And here's a cookie sheet with parchment for baking them on, and here's a spoonful of my chicken filling. People close these all kinds of ways, but I really like the thing where you gather up both sides around the filling and then crimp across the top. When the seam is on top, the empanada is far less likely to leak in the oven. On we go. It's honestly much easier to just fill them all at once, fewer hand washings this way. Plus, you can get all the way to the end, and if you run out, like I did, you can just steal a little bit from all the other ones to fill the twelfth one. I usually overfill all filled dough products anyway, so this is good. If you want to know how to make your crimping look really pretty, do not watch my channel. Go watch a video of some awesome Puerto Rican grandma doing it. I'm just trying to get it closed. It looks like a stegosaurus. I only needed to use the egg wash for sealing these when I got to the last few pies. At this point, the surface had dried to where it wasn't really sticking anymore, so egg wash. All right, chicken batch is done. For the bean filling, I made a second batch of dough. Each of these filling recipes will fill a dozen empanadas on its own. Spoon out all that filling. Again, whether I'm making these or ravioli, I always have to put in a little less filling than is my instinct. Start crimping all these up, and by the way, you can put them pretty much right next to each other on the pan. They're not going to spread in the oven very much. Lauren wanted to do some, and yeah, hers look way nicer. 
I have no idea how she did that, but thanks for the thumbnail, honey. Okay, so this is what I really wanted the egg wash for. Slop it over the outsides, every crevice. This will make a beautiful shiny brown crust, plus things will stick to it, like this coarse salt that I'm sprinkling on. This is why I slightly under-seasoned the dough. Get a little heterogeneity there. Oven is at 400 Fahrenheit, 200 C, convection if you've got it. And you just bake until they're brown. These took half an hour. And see what you get by putting the seam on top? If and when they burst, gravity holds most of the filling down inside where it belongs. Beautiful. And I like the relatively light, fresh vibe that you get by baking them. But people pan fry empanadas or even deep fry them. You do you. And legit, fill them with like whatever you've got. I think that is the whole point.